What's up guys, this is Andrew Frezza and Melissa Dixon from Care Coach Lead, and today we're gonna to be talking about why your clients shouldn't sumo deadlift like a power lifter. So we kinda of put a little teaser there for you, but basically we love the sumo deadlift and we wanted to talk about why though when we coach it in our gym, we don't coach it the way a power lifter would do it or coach it, and we teach it very differently. So we're gonna talk about um, why we do it this way. We're gonna talk about why this can be a great variation if you have any flexibility issues. We're gonna talk about how to teach it as a hinge versus more of a squat, which is more of the power lifting style. We'll talk about why you should use only a double overhand grip and you should avoid ever using a mixed grip or a hook grip. I know that's controversial for a lot of you. And then we're gonna talk about just some of the general fitness versus sports specific things that might come with a powerlifting approach versus a functional fitness approach. We gave you the great quote from, uh, what's his name? I wanna call him Ricky Bobby. I already forgot his name. Uh, I ain't trying to be the best at exercise. So we wanna talk about the difference between trying to lift the most amount of weight possible, like a power lifter, six, seven, 800, 1,000 pounds versus, you know what, I just wanna be strong enough that I can do life to the best of its ability, all right? So let's start off and talk about why we think that this is a great variation. So we've talked about in other videos about the toe touch test, okay? Run through it one more time here. So if you have an athlete that goes to do a toe touch assessment, movement assessment here, and they're short, if they go to try to do a traditional deadlift where their feet are basically gonna be about the width they would be in a toe touch test, they might be pulling load from an area that they actually don't have capacity over. So you're asking them to pull weight and load from a depth that they don't even own with no weight, all right? Now, if we have this athlete adopt a wider stance, this sumo stance, what it's actually doing is it's reducing some of the mobility required so now she's more likely to get into a better position. And I'm actually that athlete, I'm short on my toe touch test. I've been improving over time, but I'm still a little short. And the sumo deadlift has been my favorite version of the deadlift that allows me to go heavier, pain-free, and really feel my hamstrings and butt doing the work as opposed to feeling like a lot of that stress is on my low back. So just something to keep in mind as another variation for athletes that are limited there. That's something that's really quick to adjust in class too. If you're on a traditional deadlift day, all the plates are out because everybody's lifting really heavy and you don't have plates to create risers for your short athlete, widen up that foot stance, get narrow with those hands, just change it into a sumo for that athlete that day, make it feel custom for them on the fly. You're keeping them safer, you're keeping them going heavy like they want to but not too far away from what we're doing and the activity of the day. Exactly, super simple, super quick adjustment you can make. So let's talk about, let's run through the points performance of how most power lifters would traditionally sumo deadlift versus what we teach as a sumo deadlift, okay? So typically you're gonna see power lifters be super wide. You're gonna see a very uh, significant foot and toes flared out position, probably 45 degrees or potentially more. You're also gonna see a lower butt and usually you're gonna see a little bit more of this person's chest and it's a little bit more of a squat than it is a hinge if you were to have to decipher between the two. It's probably a little bit more squat focused than hinge focus. Grip wise, you're gonna see usually a mixed grip and then you're usually gonna see a hook grip as well in this lift, all right? So these are some of the, the points performance of a traditional power lifting sumo deadlift. Now, what we really like to do is we really like to go more toes forward. The stance could be just as wide, so if you wanna give your athletes a good rule of thumb, you could show them deadlift stance, squat stance, and then you say sumo would be outside squat stance. It's a good way to teach an entire class where to put their feet. So she's outside her squat stance, toes are mostly forward, okay? Now they're not out of that 90 degrees. And she's sending her butt back and hinging, so you're gonna see that chest drop a little bit more. Go ahead and get that barbell closer to you as well. Nice. So her butt's higher. She's gonna feel a lot more hamstrings and butt. And this is definitely a hinge and less of a squat, okay? So why do we teach it as a hinge versus a squat? One of the biggest reasons we do that is because coming from a CrossFit background or a functional fitness background in general, 
When you look at the number of exercises that usually we program on a consistent basis, there's a lot more really good squatting movements at our disposal than there is hinging movements. So think about squatting movements. You have air squats, front squats, back squats, overhead squats, thrusters, wall balls, single leg movements like step ups, lunges, split squats. What, am I, what else, <laughs> else am I missing here? Um, there's tons of them. And you have goblet squats, you have dumbbell variations, you have squat cleans, squat snatches. All these things are squatting movements that you're gonna see on a regular basis in a functional fitness or CrossFit setting. Now think about the list on the hinging side. Okay, we have deadlifts, we have kettlebell swings, we have Romanian deadlifts, we have uh, good mornings, we have snatches. snatches, power cleans, right? But we also even said that a squat snatch or a, or a squat clean probably falls more in the squat category than the hinge category. So there's just a lot less volume of really good hinging movements at our disposal. So if we also make the sumo deadlift another squat movement, what you're gonna to tend to have is athletes that are squat dominant, quad dominant, and don't really have a, a well-developed posterior chain button and hamstrings to protect their back and to balance out those squatting patterns. So because of that, we really like for the sumo deadlift to be that clear hinging pattern that we can use to develop someone's posterior chain. Now let's talk about grip and let's talk about why we want all of our athletes most of the time to double overhand grip. And pretty much any time we have a, a general fitness athlete that's not a power lifter, we're gonna encourage them to double overhand and skip the mixed grip. And then the hook grip is more optional. That's really a preference, but we don't push it on our clients. And the reason being is that when you think about what we're trying to do here in the gym, we're trying to create a level of strength that translates to other parts of life. And if this athlete is having to do these little nuances like a mixed grip, okay, which is gonna help her grip um, be able to sustain a little bit more weight, or a hook grip, which is gonna do the same thing, if she's doing that, does she really need to be lifting those types of loads and potentially overloading her back, maybe skewing the risk reward of heavy deadlifts outside of her favor where she's taking on more risk than necessary for the potential reward of those extra 10, 15, 20 pounds that she might be getting? And when is she gonna face situations in life where she's lifting an object and she's gonna be able to get this perfect mix grip or this perfect hook grip on something. It's really rare. Most of the time when she's lifting something, it's gonna be a pretty natural grip where she's gonna need that grip strength. So why not develop that grip strength at all times and get her into a really solid position? Another thing to think about, go back in your setup here. If she's in a traditional grip here and I tell her, hey, I want you to really pull your shoulders back and engage the lats. Because her, both of her hands are in the same position, she can do that really effectively. If she opens up this hand, it's gonna be that much harder to pull that side back. That athlete might be a little bit crooked. They might tend to pull with the arm. And all those things I just think are unnecessary in a general fitness setting. When we really take a step back and think about what are we doing here for our athletes, are those extra pounds worth it? I mean, we have people that double overhand can move a ton of weight, you know, 300, 400 pounds, is it really necessary for them to get higher than that by doing these little nuances? Even if you don't think about outside the gym, you just think about inside the gym. Something like a kettlebell sumo deadlift, she's not gonna mix grip her kettlebell. She's not gonna hook grip this thick kettlebell. She's gonna have this traditional grip here. So even just translating to other movements in the gym, there's much more translation from that double overhand grip. So when we think about functional fitness is all about translation to other movements in the gym, other movements outside the gym, why not just go double overhand all the time, no matter what? Even pull-ups, right? We're never mixed gripping pull-ups. We, if we do that, it's a training drill, it's a clear, mm -hmm. let's get this <laughs> in a mixed grip for a reason type of format, but everything else we do in life, climbing, things like that, we're doing that overhand grip, we're training our hands. Exactly, so I hope this guy gives you a bigger picture of why we do the things that we do and the difference between really dialing in and getting sports specific with something, right? There's nothing wrong with the powerlifting approach, but they are sports specific athletes. 
they are not training for longevity. They're not training for general health. They're not training for, uh, for weight loss, right? They're training to maximize three lifts, bench, squat, deadlift, all right? So if that's your goal, you're usually doing that at the expense of life. You can ask most power lifters, they're not doing it for general health. So if your clients are general health, then this is a, probably a better approach for them and this should resonate a lot better with them. All right, so hopefully this is helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and we'll see you in the next video.